Come correct or don't come at all. This is the Hard Zog Hustle Podcast. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And, and we're talking about the hustle, strategy, and mindset you need to win in the areas of your finance, your purpose, and your future. You know what I'm saying? If you have heart and you want to learn how to activate the power of your hustle, then this is the podcast for you, baby. For you, baby. Congratulations. And now, your hosts. Anthony and Janilka Hartzog. This is how it should be done. Welcome to the Hartzog Hustle Podcast. Uh, my name is Anthony, and I'm joined by my beautiful wife, Janoka. And we are, who's <laughs> <laughs> this not? <laughs> nice to meet you. We'll be talking about the everyday hustle as it relates to business, entrepreneurship, family, relationships, everything. How are you doing today? I'm doing okay, actually. No, no concerns, no issue. Um, ready to start a new week. Okay, okay. Excited to end the year. <laughs> uh-huh. um, but yeah, that's about it. And you? Good. I stayed up last night watching a Kanye West interview. Oh yeah, he had a lot of I gems. Man. I know. I know people go off on Kanye West. <laughs> I know. Or Kanye West goes off on Kanye. <laughs> Listen, he said a few times during that interview. I know I'm gonna get canceled. I think he be trying to get canceled. He want to get canceled, but he can't. When you get to a certain level and status, you really can't be canceled. I feel. Yep, and uh, Cowboys are getting beat right now, too. <laughs> that's, that's another story for that's another, another day. Story. But we are here today to talk about our cleaning business. Uh, that doesn't sound exciting. Huh? That doesn't sound exciting. No, I was just trying. <laughs> We're here to talk about how we built a six-figure cleaning business without okay, cleaning houses. Say- how about that? All right, there that's you go. That's what we're going to talk about today. Our cleaning business, in other words. <laughs> um, but yes, our cleaning business, how we do it, why we do it. How is it possible? Um, I, I, I'm laughing in my head now because I like remember seeing like people make comments like, oh, they're scamming you. There's no way that you can't clean. Like you must be cleaning <laughs> to have a cleaning business. So I, I'm just laughing about that now. But to bring it back 2017, right? Um, like everything else, Anthony heard uh, something on a podcast. You yeah, so what you heard. <laughs> listen to a, I was listening to a podcast about a college student who that needs to be trademarked. <laughs> I was listening to a podcast. I was listening to a. I'm gonna I'll get that on sure. I was listening to a podcast, and uh, it was about a college student who uh, started a cleaning business in college, but he wasn't cleaning houses. He was mm-hmm. doing like ten thousand a month, mm-hmm. and I said that sounds crazy. But if he's in college, I'm out of college, and I'm, I should be smarter than him. So <laughs> I should be able to. Uh, we should be able to do this right so that was in the midst of us paying you know attempting to pay off our debt and like side hustling like crazy so yep. i think you brought it up maybe in like may right when we were getting like one of our first side hustles and i said no yes i said <laughs> and I say, she does it with everything it's i say always, no with everything it's always a firm I said no, no to the podcast it's always a well, firm no, no, no. no i didn't say no to the podcast i said no not, not right now not right no now. With all that we have right going now. on, I I felt I always felt like it was a good idea, but with all that we have going on, I'm like, where are we fitting this in to be consistent? But however, um, I had said no when you first brought it, and then I think you brought it back. You brought it yeah. back to me. So I was doing. I did more research. So the first time I bought it, I was like, oh, it's a great idea. And I did, I normally right. do that too. I bring mm-hmm. something up, and it's normally a great idea. I normally only have great ideas. Okay, all right, brother. <laughs> <laughs> but I bought it up and. I went and did more research the second time around. Yes. And I came to you with facts, figures, and it was more along the lines of, we're not going to clean houses ourselves, but here's how are we going to get the job done. Right. And so this was our first, this was our first business, business. ever, the cleaning business. So Four years ago. It was no, because what are you talking about? And also no, because we never had a business before. So what does that look like? What does that mean? So were you more afraid because we never had a business before? I just said it was no because of both. So which one, which one made you more afraid, though? <laughs> um, I guess just wrapping my head around, around it, like the mindset shift of having a business. I've never thought of yeah. having my own business, owning my own business, wanting to my own my own business. It yep. never crossed my mind. So bringing it is kind of like, what? Why? Why okay. are we doing that? Yeah. That, makes, that makes sense. Yeah. I guess I wasn't as afraid as you were because I knew, you know, I knew it was possible. Well, when it comes to businesses, I don't think you're afraid of a lot of things. So I'm here to reel you in. Yes. <laughs> you do that. You do that. Very I'm a well. very uh, realistic person. I won't say pessimistic, realistic person. And you definitely are along the lines of like, well, let's just do it. 
I'm realistic in a way of that. I'm not going to do anything that sounds ridiculous. Right, and, right, right. Well, ridiculous when, is relative. Yeah. And when we <laughs> do it, it's like, it sounded crazy before we did it, but then, then you get people who ask, who ask you how you did it. They always mm-hmm. question you before you do something, but then, they, then always, they, ask how. they always ask you how you did it. Right, right. Just like when we first started cleaning, the cleaning business for what? Just like you did. Yeah. The cleaning business for what? Now and that was reactions of friends and family as well. And now we're sitting here doing a podcast on how. You see how, that's, you see how life works? Four years works. later. Yeah, we are. So you brought it to me. Yep. I'm like, okay. Um, and then you laid out a plan of like how we can get it done within four weeks. Yeah. Right. He laid out a plan of how to get this business done in four weeks. The different tasks we had to do. Um, we didn't know anything about LLC. Like, I mean, we obviously know LLC existed. Um, we didn't know how to do one. So I think, I don't know who hooked us up with a lawyer. I think one of your frat brothers hooked us up with a lawyer. Yeah. So when we first did this, we knew, like you said, we knew nothing about building. Oh, our financial advisors did that. Actually. Yeah. So they gave us a contact for someone who could build out our infrastructure on the business side of things. Mm-hmm. So. Our uh, LLC operating agreement and um, EIN, our EIN and that all that stuff. stuff. So now we do it for multiple businesses within like yeah, five to ten minutes. Yeah. But <laughs> we paid someone to do that stuff for us. Yep, we we paid somebody to do that, and then we were paying someone to do a website that was costing maybe like nine hundred dollars a page. Um, mind you, obviously we've never not obviously, but we never built a website, so yep. we're like unsure as to what should go where. And with this person, like. You had to say exactly what you needed for everything. Yeah. And that was kind of like, it was money wasted. It was time wasted. And we found them from Fiverr. And it was, like you said, it was expensive and it was time consuming. But we again, we didn't know what We didn't know we what. Doing. We were like, we got to build this. We have to build this out. We also used um, that lawyer to draft up a contract because we, we will get into it, but we work with contractors. So we had a lawyer review, make the contract and review it to let us know. Like, okay, these this is what's needed yeah. to be in your contract with working with contractors. Um, you so had to make sure that. the language is right so language. that if something yeah. happens, um, if they don't got insurance and everything like that, if something yeah. does happen, your your business and yourself is, is protected from it. Right. So we did that. So LLC, uh, lawyer handling those that, handling the contract. And what else did we do? Well, in the, I mean, during the process of like waiting to get that stuff up. We started, I think, doing some competitors' research, like looking at other cleaning businesses to get an idea of what the market is, what it's about. I personally never knew anything about a deep yeah. clean versus a standard clean. and Because, again, we're starting from scratch, so we didn't know mm-hmm. how to price our services or what to even include in our services. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like when we heard this podcast, he gave us a blueprint. It was more in the lines of, here's what I did. Here's what I did. And that was it. So mm-hmm. we had to kind of figure this stuff out. So when, us doing our competitors' research, we had to Google cleaning businesses in our area, and we had to find out how much they were charging, but more importantly, what they were charging for. What were they offering? What were they offering? What so were they not? We offering. offering that <laughs> then started like looking for contractors. Um, so with our cleaning business, we only work with contractors. The model can be done with employees, but we just simply work with contractors and we had to find them. We had to yeah. find the people. Um, so doing that simultaneously while the lawyer is working on everything else. So all of that was part of the process of getting this cleaning business up and running logo name, color of logo. Yeah, we, <laughs> All that type of stuff. We had family like voting on it. Yeah, it was it was a lot. And when you were talking about just uh, the contractor part, so this goes back to us not again not knowing what the hell we're doing. So no, <laughs> when we are talking to contractors, we're trying to explain to them who we are and what we're doing, so it doesn't sound like a scam. And mm-hmm. most of them, most people understand. It's just like Uber, Lyft, Airbnb. They, they all work, work with, with contractors. Um, they work with contractors, or they don't Pass own. Rabbit. Yeah, they don't own anything. They just connect you with someone who needs a job with someone that does the job. And that's how we run our business. Mm -hmm. So explaining to them that we're not going to be your employee was kind of a challenge at first. We're not going to be your manager. We're not going to be your manager. You're not going to be our employee was kind of challenging at first, too. Yeah, just to get the, the, I think, the verbal, like the language together on our side. Yeah. Because obviously, you know, we found contracts that knew exactly what we were talking about because they do it with other companies. So that was, it was easy for them. But at the beginning, we had no idea of like what to say um, we're just starting so when they're asking how much business do you have or like yeah. what locations do you do cleanings in we're like uh, <laughs> Dallas and we, yeah and we had we had to figure that out and that, that took time for us mm-hmm. to do that we did a lot of interviews early on too 
We did a lot. We were actually going into, there was a Starbucks near our area. So we were going into the Starbucks, like staying there after work or on a Saturday and having, what do you call those type of interviews? Like a fear of people coming in. <laughs> rotating, rotating interviews. Rotating interviews. One person Starbucks. in, one person out. One person Get a hot in, chocolate, out. something to last. Yeah. <laughs> a croissant, something to last so Starbucks doesn't bother you. And, and that's what we did. And that's how we were interviewing people. Um, until we got a bit more comfortable in the business and, and starting out. So and we realized that we were wasting a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And we, waste, we people waste a lot of time when they try to start a business, too. Yeah. They try to do everything perfect, and we wasted a lot of the time. We were, we, I, was focused on, like, the color of yeah. the website and what should the name be? How does it, how does it make sense? How does, yep. you know, how do we do this? But... We want, we're going to keep saying this, but this is our first business. Now, if you hear us, we say, like, ain't nobody booking you because of your website color. Yep. <laughs> ain't nobody booking you because of the name of your business, depending, you know, what business, whatever. But for this cleaning business, nobody's nobody's booking you because of that. But we didn't know. So we were starting out. And, and, and mm -hmm. then with, even with the... Going back to the contract, the interview process, we realized that we didn't need to be in Starbucks to interview people. No. It didn't make us any more comfortable with a person seeing them in person versus hearing them on the phone. At that part of the interview. Yeah. yeah it was way too soon. We were wasting our time. We were sitting there for hours upon end. I think we only did that for a few weekends, too. Yeah, we It did. wasn't that long. It wasn't I'm happy. Long. I'm happy we caught on early, too. Yeah, we. I think you started getting into groups with, like, different groups in Dallas of people that were doing cleaning yeah. businesses. And that that's what helped you to kind of understand a bit more about it, mm -hmm. like, we don't need to be doing this. I don't think we... <laughs> yeah, it was a waste. I don't think we need to be doing this. People weren't um, showing up. We sitting there drinking all these hot chocolates. Yeah, and, and, I, we don't drink coffee. Neither wasting, of us drink coffee. And wasting all this money in, on teas. And <laughs> they're looking at us like, you guys still here for it's five a cookie, hours? A cookie after, but yeah. So that that's, so that's we took that process, part of it, though. We took that process fully virtual, um, remote, and just did everything on the phone. Did everything on the phone. That was part of the process. And then, I mean, we got the business, we got the business up, right? So... Yeah. How like how do you describe going live? Somebody may say, uh, basically our website was done. We had a contractor ready to do jobs, and um, we always say having the contractor first, unless you plan to clean. Because if a booking comes in, you know how are you gonna do the job if you don't yep. have someone available? So we went live, say like Thanksgiving, and we were using the platform Thumbtack at the time. Yeah, we were um, posting on Thumbtack we were posting on Thumbtack and, and responding to people on Thumbtack. And we and got a booking on Black Friday. Yeah, if you guys aren't aware what Thumbtack is, it's pretty much just a platform that allows you to just reach out to people who just do services. Mm -hmm. So if you need a cleaning business or if you need a handyman or a plumber, you could go to Thumbtack.com. You put in what you need, and it kind of gives you a list of people in your area based off of ratings and reviews, and you can book their services. Right. So what made us stand out from the competition on that was just our customer service, but then also uh, people being able to book us online too. So that's how we got our first booking. Yeah. So having a website, and you may say in this day and age, who doesn't have a website? Oh, man. In this business, service-based business, when it comes to cleaning business, a lot of people do not. A lot of people just word of mouth. So that made us stand out significantly because you really don't have to speak to us. Um, yeah. All of the information is on our website that you need to get all to you know to book a cleaning really you may have some questions you can call us of course but you don't you don't have to um and, so and that was one of the reasons why i thought that we could come in and do well in this business because the competition was just it was a different type of competition local service-based businesses um like a hair salon or a plumber or a handyman or a cleaning business lawn, mm -hmm. lawn care mowing pool service they usually don't have websites where you could book them pay them and and get a service to you immediately that's kind of how we knew that we could come in and kind of um, be, at least put a footprint into the competition. Right. And so we went live Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, got our first booking on um, Black Friday. Black Friday. First booking Black Friday, like shocked out of our mind. Like, oh, my God, we got a booking. This thing works. This, Yeah, basically, this thing works. Oh, my God, what are we going to do? How do, what do we say next? How do we, <laughs> how do we proceed here? Um, and like we said, we had, it's not that they needed a cleaning the next day, but it was a booking for the, you know, the following week. We had a contractor and the night of the contractor says, night before the cleaning, say the cleaning was on Wednesday, Tuesday night, the contractor says they can't do the job. Mm, and that's people's biggest fear too. I think that's, that's our, everyone's that was, biggest fear. That was our biggest fear. What do you do when that happens? And what we, the, what we do now is different from what we did then. Yes. Way that's different. definitely true. And we were like. 
what the hell? Like, it's not that they couldn't do the job; they just couldn't work with us at all either. Mind yeah, you, they was, didn't do any jobs with us. But it was just something like, that happened. They couldn't do any, they didn't do any jobs. It's so like, like, yeah, I can't do that. I don't want to do this. I'm like, all right, well. We're okay. like, okay. So luckily, like I said, that he was in some cleaning business groups, and we just put it out there, like, hey, we have a job tomorrow uh, that needs to get done. Is anybody available to do the clean? And we found someone. And that's important having uh, a network too so that you're not doing this alone. I mean, obviously we got each other, but we also join networks so that we know what's happening in the industry or what's happening in any industry just in case we do need help or something mm -hmm. like that or don't know how to do something. So we found someone which ended up being a contractor for us, which we ended up buying her business at some point too. Um, but we found someone and she was able to go and do the job and do it well. So that first cleaning was a headache because yeah. it became... To rectify it, we were like, we won't charge you anything. We don't do that now, okay? Mm -hmm. We never do that now. We're like, we're not going to charge you anything. Um, we kind of ate the cost we, on that one. If we get somebody out, we won't charge you anything because we didn't think we would get somebody out. Then we had to, we had her to go out. We're like, well, should we charge again now? <laughs> yeah, it was, we had to try to figure that out. Well, we couldn't. We couldn't charge again. I mean, we really told them that we wouldn't charge. Um, we just had to pay her. And at that first job, they we weren't there, but they had a, a farm in their backyard. Yeah. Could you imagine? Our first job, we're, we're from Brooklyn, New York. We're living in Dallas, Texas. Our first residential yep. job that booked us has a, a farm <laughs> with pigs. And, and mind pigs. you, we don't go to any jobs. We don't see these jobs. So the no. only reason we know that is because she, she told, told us. us. But she was a good cleaner and she was aware and she did a wonderful job. Yeah. So that worked out in our benefit. A farm. She, but it we was were like, like little, a little She was farm. like, no, 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 a farm. Like, hey, pigs. <laughs> when she said farm, you think like it's a pig star. Like, yeah, that's, yeah. It's like, all right, well, it's a little dirty. Right, it's not that bad. She's like, no, it's literally a farm. It's just like there's hair animals. everywhere. There's dogs. There's like horses. Four, four or five dogs. <laughs> There's pigs in the back. We was like, what? That's impossible. She sent us pictures and videos like, yeah. It's, it's a, possible. It's an actual farm here. It's possible. So that was our first cleaning ever. Our first cleaning ever. And I know that we, we have a lot of students at this point and they worry about their first clean. And we're like, listen, our first clean, clean was as worse as it gets. Like, yes. No, the person, not that they no-showed, they just told us the night before. I mean, that's um, a no-show. That's right? kind of like a no-show because we were scrambling. Mm -hmm. um, that was the first clean. I don't remember like the second and third cleans, but I do remember like some earlier cleans. We had a a, a young lady that was oh, working, oh yeah, and she was going to do. Uh, the home was actually empty. It, it kind of worked out. The home was it empty. It was a move and move out cleaning. It, they just wanted to get the picture. Like they just wanted to like a make ready, a make ready. That's so what that I'm looking clean for. So that's a so real clean so they pictures. could take pictures and have people walk through. And um, she was on the way to the job. However, she got into an argument with her boyfriend or husband. Yeah, so she got into an argument with her significant other, and <laughs> the significant significant other left her on the side, side of, of the, the road. road. So I'm calling her, texting her, like asking her if she's okay. She was crying. And my my goal at that time was <laughs> to make sure she was safe. Like I, I was like, I'll come pick you up. I'll send you an Uber. Are you okay? And mm -hmm. she just stopped responding. She eventually says, I'm good, or whatever that may be. I don't think that wasn't even her first job with us, though. I think she did a, she did one she more did job. some jobs with us before. Yeah. And so she was like, Yeah. She she just disappeared. And so he she was like disappeared. Off the face. Hope, hopefully she's okay. Tony was like, I think we should go do the clean. I'm like, what? What? We're at work. <laughs> it was like, I was like, it should be e an easy job. It should to be do. an easy job. So we took our cleaning supplies from our house and we went and did the clean. Our Swiffer, our brooms. It was nothing. an easy job because it was just a wipe down. Um, it, it seems it had been cleaned already, but they just needed certain area touch up. So that was luckily an easy job. I, I think I told my job that uh, I had to take my dog to the vet yeah. or something. Listen. I don't know. I don't know what made me say let's go do it, but we did it, and the guy was happy. Yeah, he was guy, really happy. Was happy. He's like, oh, I'll refer you guys. This is great. This is amazing. And I think he was a realtor too. Yeah, he was a realtor. He was a realtor. Was a realtor. Um, I know we're not making this business look sexy at all, right? No, now. no, no. It's, this is just, but <laughs> it, this it is does some get of the better. Stuff that that we've done just and, at the beginning, and we like to share these stories because it's fun for us to look back and and the way we run our business now versus what we. did It's like then. no, ma'am, I would never. It, 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 um, we changed the game the way we do it now, but it's fun to look back. It's not like this now, but it's, it doesn't look sexy. And then right only one other time we we'll had. Get, a, we'll get to the sexy part. <laughs> so stick, I promise you, stick with us. We had a weekend. Um, Oh, yeah. Where you once it, <laughs> listen, I was always against cleaning anybody's yeah. home because I'm like, I'm scared of a fly. So, you know what I'm thinking of walking to somebody's house? If I see anything moving that's not supposed to be moving, yep. <laughs> I am going to get out of here. But one weekend, I don't know what it was. 
maybe we didn't have the people we didn't want to cancel and he was like let's just go do the jobs ourselves Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we had jobs that we did ourselves. So I think our earlier challenge was that we didn't hire. We tell our students now, if you guys didn't know, we have a cleaning business course that we teach students on how to get the cleaning business up and running without cleaning houses. But we tell them to hire people. Don't just get one contract and yeah. think you think you run in the world. And that was our thing. We got one, and we tried to run it off. We tried to run up the bag. And, yeah, open and it we, up. And we, yeah. got, and we got caught. So that weekend, we got caught. They probably canceled or something. And- uh, probably. <laughs> and we cleaned. And the homes thankfully weren't that dirty but, but they, they were huge, huge. <laughs> we're talking about like four thousand square feet they were huge and like it was one was a friday night and we're like yeah we're the owners she's like oh my god like she, she's like yeah we're getting a divorce like oh, this yeah, whole that, thing oh. she and had a huge house that two, house is two huge. banners two two banishers going up to the top of the balcony the house was huge the okay backyard was ridiculous we worked that sunday i looked at him and was like Never again. Okay. We're not doing this. We got to figure this out. We got to make sure our businesses and books are in order because this ain't it. This is not it. That was a good, that was a good family bonding moment. Oh, please. That was a good, that was a, we definitely We were strategizing. You're right. Like you get this, I get this, you get this, I get this. Organize. We bonded that weekend. We did three houses. I think we made like a thousand, fifteen hundred, something like that. But who knows? The point is it was locked. The labor, the job Cleaning is very intensive, labor intensive. Mm-hmm. But yeah. the margins in the business are very good. If you clean yourself. If you, you clean can, yourself, you get away like a bandit. You can definitely get away like a bandit. So we got our business up and running. So, we had some earlier times of having to clean on our own. We do not suggest that to anyone. However, it's your business, so you can you know clean if you would like. Um, but the way that we teach is to basically, like he said, connect the contractor with the job. And you may ask, well, how is that possible We have a website and people book us on there. We primarily are only market online and that's how people find us. We did one time do um, some flyers and slip some flyers under people's doors. That was fun. 95 degree weather. More bonding. 95 degree weather. We didn't get nothing from it. Um, But yeah, we, we market everything online. So earlier on, when one of the questions we get all the time is like, how do you, how do people, why would somebody book you versus a competitor? So mm-hmm. we talk about social proof all the time. So we want to make sure that your reviews are, you got as many reviews as possible. How are you getting reviews if you don't have a business up and running? You could do test cleans for friends and family. Um, have your contractors go out and do houses. And you could have them leave reviews on all these websites for you. So now when people are booking you, no one wants to be the first person to book a service that doesn't have any reviews, right? Because right. now you feel uncomfortable. You don't know what they're going to do. But your online yeah, I'm not reputation. Going if it doesn't have a review. Yeah, your online reputation is your reputation for your business more often than not. So um, early on, we definitely recommend you getting reviews so that people could book you online. Yeah, so booking online is how is how we run our business. Other questions that we usually get is, um, well, why would a contractor work with you versus um, yeah. just doing it on their own? And so all of our contractors have their own business, have their own clients. The reason that they would work with us is more work. Sometimes it slows down in the business. Yep. Um, and working with us allows them to get more work, allows them to have, maybe have a full schedule, allows them to do... OT, if you will, just more yep. money. Um, and it's flexible because they are contractors. So they simply just say yes or no if they're available for a job. Um, and and that's the reason that they will work with us. Beyond that, uh, we do pay them weekly. We do treat them right, too. And you may say, well, duh, you, you should treat them right. But we hear so many stories of our contractors working with other companies, Um that the person, the manager, the owner, whatever, like curses at them or says nasty things to yeah, them. Yeah, that's crazy. So that is that is key th- key as well. I think showing them that you hear them, you mm-hmm. trust them. We put a lot into them. You know, we trust that they would provide us with information, things like that. So that allows them to have that autonomy and continue to work with you. And it's just like if a uh, Uber driver, like why would a person work with Uber if they could just do taxes? Drive on their around own? on their own. It's like the exposure. You're not getting yeah. the same exposure. <laughs> it's just like they have a whole platform that can market your business and they mm-hmm. just take a cut of it. So wouldn't you work with them so that you can get more business? Yeah. So it's just like that. Yeah. So we work and the process the process of it really is uh somebody finds us online, they look at our website, they fill out all the information that they may need, how many bedrooms and bathrooms, square footage. If it's a deep clean, they get a price. Yep. 
and they book us. You have to put a card down to book us. Um, we don't come out to the home unless unless the card is down so that we know that we can charge. Once they book us, we decide, okay, well, let's see which contractor wants the job. And uh, the contractor says, yes, they go do the job. All goes well, we charge. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully all goes well. Hopefully all goes well, then then we charge. Of course, there's times when clients aren't satisfied, um, which is life. You won't satisfy everyone. You can't, um, especially not in this business. Especially not in this business, because it can be opinionated, right? I could say, well, I scrubbed for 10 minutes on this tub, and you could say, well, that's not enough, yeah. right? <laughs> um, and that does happen. That does happen. And so... You know, once once we charge, all is well. We mm. reach out. We ask how the cleaning was. That's another thing that we push as well is getting that feedback to know what's happening in your business, getting that feedback to know how contractors are doing, uh, things like that. And we charge them. That's like the quick process of it all. <laughs> yeah, and that feedback's important to us because, number one, we want to make sure the client is satisfied with what we did. But then also mm-hmm. we want to make sure that we're getting that feedback from them before they leave it on Yelp, Google, Facebook, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. so that we can rectify any issues that they may or may not have. Yeah, so that's, that's a what big we, deal. we push for that feedback. We're calling you as soon as the cleaning's done. Like, yo, yeah. wow, how did that cleaning go? You good? We yeah. good? All right, cool. Um, what would you say? Some big changes that from like when we started to now. When we started, we were answering all the phone calls. Yeah, we were answering. We all were the calls. also answering all calls. Now. Uh, we have a virtual assistant business that we own that answers all of those calls. Uh, we were answering all leads. We were, we were, funny thing, I'm thinking about this now. So I was, when we were first answering our phone calls, like you be in a meeting and the phone rings to me, I'm running out of a meeting at work into like the hallway to answer the phone. Like, hey, thank you for calling. Yeah. How, how can I service you? And you got the background noise and I'm trying to hide. So uh, those are the good old days, man. Those are the fun days. Yeah, and then it's like, <laughs> oh no, I'm going to be in meetings all day today. Switch the number to your phone yep. so I, you could answer because we I was working at home. Um, but with the position I had at the time, I uh, was like always on the phone. Yeah. So it was a little harder. Uh, now, uh, with the position I'm in, I'm not on the phone as much at all. But... It was a little harder for me to answer, even though I was working from home. So, yeah, we were doing that. Every night, you were going on Thumbtack, responding to leads and following up with leads and um, doing the work on Facebook. Yeah. And, and a business like this, you can't leave those leads hanging. Like they're no, looking, If they're looking no. for a service, they want to get you now. Yeah. And the service that responds the quickest is probably going to get the booking. Mm-hmm. And that's how this just works. Yeah. So if, if we missed a call... We try to call right back or do within five to 10 minutes because if not, they're just moving around. They're shopping around maybe and they don't have anyone to speak to. They're just moving. They're moving on. Yep. So that was a that was another thing um, that's different now. Marketing, as I spoke about, that we only do it online. I mean, we were only doing it online then, but amount of money that we were putting into marketing, um, which I had to learn that marketing is what is it? Marketing is not an expense. It's marketing a, is an investment. Not investment, an yes. Marketing is an investment, not an expense. Now, if you think about, let's just think about the big companies, the Targets, the Macy's. The Walmarts, the Victoria's Secret. They market it for Black Friday months before. But they market every single day, multiple times a day. How many emails, Commercials, emails do you, you get from it. Target? Do you get from Victoria's Secret? At least three a day. And you get it in the mail too. The mail, the commercials that they run, all of that is marketing. So we treat our business and think of our business in the same way. Like we have to market that much as well. We're not on TV screens, maybe not yet, (laughs) Um, (laughs) but we have to market and put that much into it if we want to see a return because we know we're not, um, you know, at the supermarkets, we don't really have any friends out here, friends and family out here. We can't do the volume that those places could do because we don't have the bandwidth, we don't have the marketing dollars. So we do as much as we can on the sites that we use. So Yelp, Mm -hmm. Google, uh, Facebook, uh, Google Local Services, Mm -hmm. Thumbtack. So that's where we put our majority of our money at. Yeah. Um, so that's another thing, marketing. And What's the biggest challenge in the business for you? Biggest challenge in the business. You're coming with the question. Contractors, finding good people. We will tell you that from the beginning. And I think some people or most people think it's getting the clients. You're going to find clients. People are going to book you with no worries. Once you have that social proof. They will come in. It is the contractors finding good people and what that looks like. And what I find, I feel like when we speak to some of our students and they're like, I'm not finding anyone. And we're like, well, how many interviews have you done? Where have you posted? What have you done? They're Mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, about three to five interviews. And I'm like, let me tell you something. (laughs) Come, Come a little closer. Come a little closer. Let me tell you something. When we were interviewing ourselves, it was after work hours. We were sometimes doing like 
five interviews a, uh, night. a night when we started doing it on the phone. When we were out of Starbucks and started doing it on the phone. <laughs> we took this show on the road. Yeah. Um, four or five interviews a night. So I could be doing upwards of 20 interviews a week uh, to find good people to say the same thing and get their information and mm-hmm. find good ones and things like that. So it takes time. Any job is going to take time to find good people. Mm, um, and I, th- I think that people just kind of give up too early. And I don't know if it's, um, I think sometimes we think about like social media, you see things and you're like, well, I should be there or because somebody else didn't like, why am I not doing that? That imposter syndrome that yeah. people talk about. Uh, but everybody's situation is different. Right. So I'm like, you have to put in a lot of work to find good people. Think about your personal job, your nine to five. I'm sure they interview more than one person to get in a certain role, right? And and even then, you may be like, I know some people that's not the best here, that work here. They went through 10, and, 20 people before they got to you. Right, right. And so it's the same thing when it comes to this business. Finding, because you can find a contractor that may do a good job and may have insurance because we require our uh, contracts to have business liability insurance. You can find them, but are they good? Because mm-hmm. we've come across people that are not good cleaners. <laughs> we've had people who thought they had their own business up and running, and we realized, like, you got a car, you got the logo, you got this, that, and the third, and you really can't do the job. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not good at the job, right? So you... Finding the good people is the hardest thing about this business. Um, And I think with any business, it requires money that you're putting into, right? So maybe your state requires an LLC yearly renewal. I mean, I don't know how it goes. Um, You have business expenses. The the website, you have to pay monthly. You have to pay the contractors. Uh, Well, that comes from the income that you get from the jobs, of course, the residential cleanings and stuff. Um, And so all of that, business expenses, I think, is another thing. But the biggest challenge will always be for me is the contractors to this day. And we are four years into the business, and that would continue to be a struggle. But one of the best things about it is that when you find good contractors, you're able to hopefully keep them around. Yes. Because you're treating people. When you find out when people are good, you want to do your best to keep them around. Mm-hmm. That That's not just for the business, the cleaning business we run. That's for any business that we run or any business we're a part of because mm-hmm. those are the people that's going to fuel your business. Without them, you have no jobs. You have no customers. You have nothing. Mm-hmm. So when you find those people, you're nurturing them, you're grooming them, you're making sure that they're satisfied, you're checking in. And those are the things that you have to do in order to keep people around for a long time. Uh, we get people who stay with us. You know, we got or three, four years at this point, and mm-hmm. some of them don't want to leave. Like, oh my God, I, I had to, I got to call out, but I want to make sure that you know why, and mm-hmm. I want to make sure you understand what happened so that I'm able to continue Come to back. get jobs uh-huh. with you guys. Mm-hmm. And then also getting referrals from them. So yeah. the contractors that we have, it's mostly like a friend referred somebody. Those are the best contractors that we found. Like, yep. they start working with us, they see how it goes, they see how we are, and they're like, oh, can I refer some other people that would want to help or want to do clean? We're like, hell yeah. <laughs> we prefer we prefer for you to refer because it's just easier. We kind of have a, a trust there that we understand. Like, they're going to understand the business because you're probably telling them about it. Of course, we will speak to them about it as well. But yeah. definitely referrals, referrals are a we big deal. We prefer the refer. We prefer to <laughs> refer. <laughs> That's a bar right there. Yes. Um... I, I, I thought of something just now when it came to contractors that I feel like people ask a lot to, but it crossed my mind. Well, contractors are going to, but they're also going to come and go too. You got to understand that mm-hmm. they got their own lives. They may, they may want to change up their careers. Mm-hmm. Everyone that we work with right now does clean. Some of them don't clean as much as others. Some of them have their own businesses, mm-hmm. um, but they're going to come and go. You got to be comfortable with that, but also you want to make sure you are treating them as well as you can so that you could keep them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the good thing about it, I know two things that come up. People say, "Is is this uh, recession proof?" And then, "Can I do it in my in my city?" Yeah, that's a, one thing. So, recession proof in regards to the cleaning business. Many people would say, well, wouldn't they want more cleaners? So I would think, yes, this is recession proof because of COVID, the COVID and the pandemic that we're in. But for us, you know, with us doing, we only do residential cleaning. We could yep. do commercial, but we only do residential cleaning. At this time. At this time. Yeah, that could change. I may come maybe. up with another idea soon. And yeah, oh God. Next thing you know, we out here. And that could change by the time this drops. But we only do residential cleaning. And so having people in your home is still was like a 
a slippery slope. But if the way that we run the businesses, you can always lower your expenses. So our biggest expense is marketing, right? Yep. So we were able to lower those efforts because not many people were booking. Because if no one's looking for the service, there's no reason for you to continue to advertise a service that, that they're not looking for. Right. So we can turn that down, which also means that the contractors don't work as much. So that means we're not paying as much coming out of our account. So there yeah. was ways that, you know, you can always turn things down. It's like a faucet we say with the marketing. If if one, if Yelp isn't working, turn it down for that month and put on yep. Google. Exactly. Uh, you know what I mean? So we were able to do that. So we say, yes, it's recession proof. Now, if you work in the commercial space, um, you probably could be booming, right? And with our course, you can do both. We focus mainly on residential, but we have many students that went on to do commercial. Um, but if you do commercial space, then you can go on and do all these things. The main reason we don't do is because we work with contractors. And so that means that the contractor would have to have commercial equipment. Yeah, so you got so, those those big squeegees for the floor that you got to have when you're doing or the the buffer the thingy. buffers. And, <laughs> so it, it kind of changes the game a little bit. Anybody, but there's also that changes the level of competition you have too because in res mm -hmm. residential, anybody can start a residential cleaning business. Or you, mm -hmm. I, we could start. Well, I mean, we have, but if we want to go out and clean, we could because we got the supplies in our house. Right. But now, commercial, commercial space, it, it changes the game. There's less competition in there because everybody doesn't have the the buffer for the floors mm -hmm. and um, they don't Some have a large things. team and things like that. So there's different levels of competition in each one too right so that's one thing another thing was can it work in your city oh yeah people ask us all the time that uh, yeah so what you say to that breathe out to that <laughs> i got you got to breathe on that one because it comes up so often uh -huh. and the reason it comes up often because i think it's a fear for most people they're like well mm -hmm. people want to find a reason why something can't work like oh i work in, i live in new york can it work in new york because there's so many people in new york oh in south dakota there's no people here can i do it here <laughs> And we That's South Dakota. I'm just thinking. About <laughs> I don't know Minneapolis, Minnesota. I don't know Minnesota. But, what? <laughs> Minnesota. Minnesota. <laughs> Mini, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, but we always say yes. It can work anywhere as long as if you Google um, local service business or cleaning business in your area, mm -hmm. it will work. If you find one business in that area, it will work. If you Google it and no one pops up, then I'll probably say it does not work for your business. It probably doesn't work for your area, and you probably shouldn't. Or maybe do it. you could tell me. Nah. Listen, <laughs> if there, you know what you say, I'm nobody not, listen, not one clean If, if I move area. to a new area, right, mm -hmm. and I Google barber shops in my area, and there's absolutely no barber shops, I'm not opening a barber. Either everyone is bald, <laughs> or no one, no one's paying or they, for, or they, they got dreads, it or they got dreads or something like or that. Or they do it on their own. Yeah. 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 So yes, it can work in your city. Let's answer the question. Can that was the an answer. That was, a, that was a short, long answer. Yes, it can work. It can work in your city. But I wanted to give them reasons why. Yeah. So it can work in your city. Uh, I guess the question becomes why, what makes you feel like it can't work there? Right. And so we have people say, well, I live, like you said, New York, I live in LA. And I'm like, they're like, there's thousands, hundreds of cleaning businesses. Okay. So they, feel like, they feel like the market's oversaturated. You know, my, my favorite thing about oversaturation is walking down the bread aisle or walking down the makeup aisle because there is Wonder Bread, there is, what are the other ones? I can't even remember the names, but... If you look through, <laughs> walk down the bread aisle. I only know Wonder Bread. You, that's not all you know. That's what I grew up on. Here we go. Um, if you walk down the bread aisle, there's tons of different breads that offer wheat. But yeah. for some reason, you want to go with the Thomas English Muffin wheat brand. Or you want to go with the Wonder Bread brand. Makeup, excuse me, the amount of eyeshadow palettes that have black in it, the amount of red lips that have this from Fenty to Kylie to NARS to Armani to all these other brands, Huda Beauty, yeah. they all sell the same exact thing. Let's be very clear. The same exact thing. Foundations, different ranges, different. some make stand out because of inclusion, but they all sell the same exact thing and that so doesn't what? stop anybody from continuing to do it. So why do you got all of them? That's not, what we're not here for the what? Don't we bring my business to the well, podcast? So why do you have why do you have all of them? All these different brands. They all do the same thing. Why you got all of them? Because I like different things. Okay, somebody got a different texture somewhere else. So, so that just lets you know if she, if all these brands have all the exact same thing and she's choosing to choose one, that lets you know there's room for your there's room for your business and whatever you're gonna do. You're gonna stand out. Yep. Um, there's thousands, millions of people in say Texas, millions of people in Texas. There's not enough cleaning businesses to say like, oh, that they're going to cover all these people. Obviously, everyone's not booking a cleaning service, but nope. still, even if you get 1% of the market, yeah, 
that's still a lot of people if you think about it that way. So yes, it can be done in your in your city, in your state. And no, you don't have to live in that state, but it also depends on your comfortability. Yeah. We the cleaning business was our first business, so we really we did it here cuz that's what we knew. At this point, could we open it up in another city? Yes, because everything is done remotely, really, and I don't. You don't need to be in that city to run the business. And we have students who've done it in multiple cities too. So right, you don't have to just do it in your local backyard. But like she said, we want to be not comfortable. the local backyard. <laughs> we want to make sure that we were comfortable when we when we were doing it. Yeah. Um, another thing that comes up a lot of times is, well, how much do I need to start the business? And that comes up a lot. Well, money money is a big deal. So what we always say is we say fifteen hundred on the high end, right? Um, and that could include the marketing, the LLC, the website, uh, your your logo, things like that. But don't start a business or this any business. I'm gonna say any business on your last dime. Yeah, because you're gonna be struggling to get clients, and you're gonna be starting to try. You're gonna try to choose every client that comes across your or come across your table because mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. You're like, I need the money now. I want that client now. I'm going to fight for that client. And that's not probably not the client you need. No. You're going to take every client. Yeah. And you learn that quickly. Um, not all clients are for you, and, and that's totally fine. Um, so we say 1500 on the high end to start your business, but don't let it be your last dime. Yeah. Because then I think the business suffers in that way as well. A business is going to have business expenses. You don't always make money right away from a business. I mean, we have some students that are able to do it within a few months, which is fine, but I don't. I personally won't start a business like if and then they're like, well, I didn't make any money in two months. So is it really working? I mean, we didn't take <laughs> money out of the business for two years. We didn't take money out for two years. But we were getting, making money and we let the money sit there. We and just we, let it sit there. We were fortunate enough that we didn't need the money as mm-hmm. it was coming in, too. So we kept all the money in it. And when we did need it, we mm-hmm. took it out. Yeah. Yeah. But you got to put yourself in a position so that you don't need that money immediately when you start any business. Right. Because we have a virtual assistant business and it's losing money right now. Yeah. It is. It's not doing um, as, as well as we want it to be, but we just got the business. I mean, that's part of the ebb and flow. It's not like it's been losing money for a year. Yeah. Then we would be like, uh, okay, we just got it in February, and it recently started lo- losing money the past two months. So we're like trying to strategize, figure it out, and that's what you do with a business. And so we want to make sure that that's clear. But imagine if we started that business on our last dollar. We'd be yeah. struggling. We'll like, be. It oh, would we, be. We a mess. Close. You will close it down. You will close it down. So now you're trying to get every single client. You're trying to do every single strategy. You start you're firing frustrated. people. You're yeah. frustrated. So. When you get your, when you put yourself in that position, you don't have to force anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what are some other things that come up with our cleaning business that we that we speak about a lot, or questions that people usually have? One of the a question that comes up all the time in the cleaning business is outside of the finances, the time commitment. Time commitment, and well, well start with then and then come to now because it's two differences. But then also. I don't know. I, I, I kind of like, not that people shouldn't ask the question because I get it, but then I guess I, I wonder how much time do you plan to put into it? I feel like when yeah. people ask that question, it feels like, well, do you have, like, they don't have enough time for it. It's they kind don't. of how, how I take it. And that could well, be completely they, wrong. They probably do got the time. They don't want to put the time in. Because yeah. it's this okay, time. They could, they could put the, let's be this clear. Time. They don't want to put the time in. So I need to know exactly. And so if you tell me five hours and it's more than that, then that's an issue. Five and so, hours in one minute. It becomes so that's an issue. where we speak about. But time commitment is different than to now, right? And I think with any business, yeah. or depending if you're doing launches and stuff, it, it may vary. But at the beginning, we spoke about like every night having to go on thumbtack, uh, maybe fixing things on our website, maybe communicating more with our contractors, interviewing, interviewing that type of stuff. So, what was it taking a week? I don't even know. Maybe five hours, let's say. Let's say within a week, maybe five hours. Which is still not a lot. No, because there's, yeah, there's a lot more hours in a week. So let's say five hours. Now, what it takes us is more like 30 minutes consecutively because we have things in place, which um, 
I don't know if we said this at the beginning, we didn't have anybody to go to for the cleaning business. So we were winging it. Oh yeah. We were, saying we were Googling. So we were, we were kind of, we were winging it, yep. but with our chorus is nothing to wing. <laughs> Cause we kind of went through the struggles. We, laid it out. we went through the trials and tribulations. We learned what we had to learn and we put it in a course. And we put it all in the course. So we laid it out for people to know what to do, what to say, what to ask and stuff like that. So then it was a lot more time, but you may not have to spend that much time because it's it's more information there. But now, maybe thirty minutes in the business for us, which is fine. That I mean, I mean, at least for us, that yeah. works. If if that's maybe it's too much for you, or maybe you're still doing two hours, even if you're still doing five hours, if you think it's about still... it, that's nothing. That's nothing <laughs> work, compared to everything else. You work for a job for forty hours a week, so. right? Five hours is nothing. Right. And then for we, your own business. We calculated how many hours it took for us to run our business on a Saturday. It was supposed to be a busy Saturday. We had like nine bookings. Mm -hmm. And we were hoping. It was I like was, six minutes. Yeah, it was like six minutes. Yeah. And it was like a $2,400 day. Yeah. Last Saturday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we were like, wow, I really wanted it to be more time so that people could see. But nothing went wrong in that instance. But now if something did go wrong, it probably would have took maybe an hour or two. Yeah. It's still not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. It's, it's definitely doable. Um, so, yeah, that, that's the time commitment that, that, that we say. But obviously it will vary for you. It will vary at the beginning. We had each other. Yep. That's another thing. You know, we have each other. So we can delegate different things, um, which is another big thing of how do you do it when you're working with your partner? How do you do? How do you uh, figure who does what? That's a, let's talk about that. Yeah. So that's what I was getting to. <laughs> um, so we always say that we play off of each other's strengths and weaknesses, really. Yep. Um, I am a therapist, and I do better with people. <laughs> you do therapy. How about that? I do therapy or have more patience with people and customers empathy. and empathy and contractors and stuff like that. And he does tech. He's so big I on the tech side. So I focus more on the back end. So mm -hmm. we're talking about Everything from building a site to the, Any issues the charging within. system to the mm -hmm. marketing, the advertisement, mm -hmm. the SEO, all that stuff uh, I handle. Yeah. So I don't got to worry about the people as much. As much. Um, but I uh, – now now not so much because we have virtual assistants that do that. But yep. I um, speak to our contractors more, like if they have an issue with something or something is different from what they see on their booking form. Um, and I speak to clients – uh, or I spoke to clients more when they weren't happy. Um, really, what was the deal? Um, and trying to rectify the situation and see mm -hmm. how what we can do, get the feedback, what we can do to make them happy. Does that mean we're recleaning? Does that mean we're refunding different area? You know, a certain amount. Uh, so I would make those decisions basically. So you handle the people, I handle the tech. Mm -hmm. That is the best way to describe it because there was a situation where a person needed. They had an issue, right? And mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, cool. You got an issue. Let's talk about it. Oh, this. that's your business thing. This is exactly how the conversation went. So they had an issue <laughs> with the cleaning. The, our virtual assistants were off. You were busy or something like that. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm I think I was traveling. It. You were traveling. I'm like, I'm going to handle it. So there was an issue. They wanted a refund off of a service or they wanted a, a partial refund or something. I'm like, listen. Or they weren't saying. They, and I'm like, listen, we're both here. You called me for a reason. How can we rectify this issue? Yeah, what I do you, don't think they said what they wanted. And I, I was, was like, thing. I was like, I don't want to beat around the bush here. What are you looking for to what are you looking to receive at the end of this conversation? Mm -hmm. What's your preferred mm -hmm. outcome? Mm -hmm. Like, what do you want? Pretty much what do you want? And they couldn't tell me what they wanted. It's like, are you looking for a full refund, a partial refund? Are you looking for a reclean? And they were like, No, you know, I don't want to <laughs> cause any issues or anything like that. And my I was like, let me, let me slow down. <laughs> let me uh let me see what Janoka would do in this situation. <laughs> I was like, I'm, a, I'm just refund them everything. I was like, I'm just gonna refund them everything. And, and like, I am very anti refunding everything because our people did the work. Even yeah. if they're you're not happy, we did the work. We pay them a livable wage. Um, yes, it can just come out of our pocket, but you have to be reasonable about things. You can't just. It's not. It's not that they don't do anything at all. If, if you say like, oh, the bathroom wasn't done well, you have a four thousand square foot home. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can refund you the bathroom. I can't refund you everything. And so, sometimes um, that's what clients do. They try to ask things that it's like, okay, come on now, man. That's not even. We can't do that. That's too much. That's too much. So yeah, you were you were ready. His biggest thing is like. All right, why are we beating on the bush? What is it that you let's want? Let's get to the root of the issue. Yeah, That's yeah, my let's biggest. Get to let's get to the root of the, the issue. And that was my only goal at the end of most of these conversations. Like, what are yeah. you looking for? And I and usually... How can we rectify it? 
You have to hear them out. They gotta. I don't want to hear you out sometimes. I don't want to hear you out. Just tell me what the issue is. They got to speak on what went wrong, how we could have done better, how they own businesses and we aren't <laughs> running those, ours correctly. Those are, the, those are the best people. I got a business and like, okay, this great. This is not how you do it and et cetera, et cetera. They got to just get that out. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I would say understand Sometimes some things they're asking for is like things we don't do. So speaking on that, speaking on where we went wrong and how can we move forward. And and that's usually like the steps uh, that I take, especially when responding back, when it's a phone call. Because we're, I understand people like to have uh, things written in Mm -hmm. email because it's like you can refer back to it. But some of these things that come up, it's best to just pick up the phone and call. And clients appreciate that. I've had clients say like, oh, surprised that you guys call. I assume it was going to be a back and forth via email, right? Um, but that human, even though we run everything online and we don't really need to speak to people, that human connection can go further. So just picking up the phone and calling uh, goes a long way. And we tell all of our students to make sure that you're reaching out to clients. after. Every- and that's why we call every single client after every clean. Yep. Four years in the game, we are still doing that, and we will continue to do that. And people are like, oh, well, that's kind of taxing. Can't you just send an email? Can't you just send a text? They actually do get an email from our system. And sometimes um, they get a text message, too. Sometimes they get a text message, too. But a lot of people ignore that. A lot of people ignore that. So, um, and, and as he mentioned, if you get on the phone with them, I maybe can jump in front of you leaving that bad review somewhere or you being upset and be like, they just charged me and went about their business, right? Yeah. Um, but if we reach out, we can kind of hear some of that feedback. And customer service is the name of the game in any yes, any, yes, yes. any business, uh-huh. especially a local service business. So we try to make sure, like you said, get in front of any issues that come up. Yes. Um, so what else? What else with the cleaning business? I want to make sure that we lay it out as much as we can. Um, There's only so much you can lay out. And the, okay, so we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk but more about four four years in the business. What has it taught us? Okay, well, yeah, that's a good one. That people are people. You? People are people. People, <laughs> people are going to be people. People are going to be people. Four years in the business, people are going to be people. And you can't um, satisfy everyone. I definitely learned that. You can't satisfy everyone. Regar- I mean, we've sent sometimes our best cleaners and stuff, and people send pictures, and I'm like, what is this? What are we looking at? I'm mm-hmm. squinting, trying to figure out what the issue is. Um, I think people are people is one thing. Uh, marketing is an investment. It's something I definitely learned. Because the more marketing dollars we put in, the more revenue revenue we get. It, it's kind of it's real simple math. Um, yeah. When it comes to that, like as we say, sometimes it can vary. It can slow down a little bit, but we realize, hey, if we put in more, we usually see a great return. Um, so those are those are two things I learned about the business. What what would you say you learned? So one of the biggest things I learned about this business would be that. Your first business doesn't necessarily have to be your last business. And I okay. say that because we were... you plan to have us do more, that's why. Always. <laughs> this, this, wasn't, this wasn't our last business. So when we came in, we, we came with the minds so like everything has to be perfect. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking like this is going to be an, this is going to be our only business. But it ended up being one of like four or five uh, businesses that we've started since this. So mm-hmm. your first business doesn't have to necessarily be your last. And it doesn't have to be perfect when you do it too. And if you give everything at least one year, I promise you, you'll see some traction if you keep going, but then also you keep progressing as you go along too. And it, like you said, it's built out so much more. So we have this cleaning business and then we have now have a virtual assistant business that we own that only does a uh, virtual assistant for cleaning businesses. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have the course that we started Mm -hmm. based off of starting this cleaning business and within the course as well we have a paid community for people that have additional questions that once they take the course they may want some additional uh, support they may just have more questions just want to be around like-minded people we have that then we also do like one-on-one for people that just want that one-on-one attention from us so it's like a uh, what would just a big cycle, a big circle, circle of life, <laughs> <laughs> circle of life. That's a good one. <laughs> a big circle of life when it comes to this cleaning business. And then along with the opportunities that's allowed us to do. Exactly. So with the cleaning business money is kind of how we say it. Then we can put in more into our heart money brand. We can put in more into investment properties. We can put it, you know, so our businesses allow us to continue to build more 
other other businesses as well. Yeah, four years in, we've done over seven hundred thousand dollars in revenue, and yep. we are still growing. So, starting yep. a business from fifteen hundred dollars to potentially growing into a million dollars in you know four maybe five. Not potentially, years. it'll happen. Well, five years a million. From your mouth business. to God's ears, it will <laughs> starting happen. Starting a business with fifteen hundred dollars and growing into a million dollar brand, a million dollar business in five years is is absolutely mind blowing. So, mm-hmm. um, that's that's crazy. Yeah, and then the course. The course, what well, the course that we have that we launched Cleaning and Business cleaningbusinessuniversity dot com. It'll be in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> now we got show notes. Now we got show notes. I'm excited to say that um, cleaningbusinessuniversity dot com is the name of is our website, I should say, and it has. I'm trying to figure out how to how to say what is in the course. Everything that we did from A to Z. From starting your business entity straight to getting your first client is in the course. Uh, so we speak about all the systems that we use for phone, for uh, paying our contractors, marketing. how much we pay them, how to find out how much to charge in your market, marketing, different marketing tools, finding clients, keeping clients, reoccurring clients. Yep. What does that mean? And and what do you do to keep the clients around? Same thing with the contractors, finding the contractors. We provide you with the questions to acts on interviews uh the contract that we paid a thousand dollars for from our lawyer <laughs> we added that for free we added that in there um the job ad that you post to find the contractors all of that is in there to you we have a connection to help you build your website as well and to getting your first client and continue to get clients it's all in our course so everything um, that we had to learn from scratch everything we had to google everything that we had mm-hmm. to figure out we kind of combined it all into one platform so that our students can get their businesses up and running right within four to six weeks yeah and, and yeah and that's and that's the thought that you can get up and running four to six weeks we did it in four weeks uh without really having uh, a plan so with you having a plan, we imagine to see you like breeze past us. We've and, and we've seen that with students. Yeah. So we've seen that with a lot of students and they do it from all over the United States and um, different backgrounds, different people, just another. And it started it's so funny that it started as a side hustle, as one of our side hustles. And now it is so much more than that. It's part of a circle of life that I just explained. It's allowed me, it's allowed me to quit my job. Yep, I'm, it's allowing to quit your job. Um, it just provided so much more, and we will continue to grow with the business. And so that's what our course consists of, uh, cleaningbusinessuniversity.com. So grab it if you want. <laughs> yeah. If you would like to know how to start your cleaning business and get your business up and running in four to six weeks. And um, anything else on this that you want to say? No, cleaningbusinessuniversity.com. Like she said, the notes will be in... The Somewhere notes will be in the here. notes. You the see, notes, you, no, the link will be in the show notes. The, notes, the, show, the show notes will be in the show notes. <laughs> no, the, <laughs> the links will be the in links the show will be notes. In the show notes. Yes. I'm still new here. I'm still, uh, okay. still learning this. Uh, but we appreciate you guys joining us uh-huh. for the Hard Dog Hustle podcast. Again, my name is Anthony. And I am Janoka. Thank you for joining. Don't forget, listen, you guys can dream all you want, but the hustle is what's going to take you there. Have a great day. This has been an episode of the Heart Zog Hustle Podcast. We hope you enjoyed. Be sure to rate and review this podcast on your favorite listening platform. And follow Anthony and Janilka on Instagram at The Hartrimony. That's T-H-E-H-A-R-T-R-I-M-O-N-Y. Keep hustling, baby. Keep hustling, baby. Get that money. Get that money.